Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimme Camper. Thanks for tuning in to our project. Today we're continuing our series on fixing the water damage on our ultralight camper. It's turned into a mess. The whole front end of the things fell off now. We'll get into that in the next video. In this video, what we're going to concentrate on is the roof. Now this information isn't 100% the right way to do it. It's one of the possible ways that you can go to do this. You know, the correct way would be to replace all of the roofing material, go through all that. This is a cheap camper. I'm doing the bare minimum that I think is going to give it the longevity, structural support, everything like that that it needs for the time being because it's not going to last forever and I'm not putting $10,000 in a $3,000 camper. I'm just not going to do it. So this is the avenue that I picked to go down and just take a look at what I did. Tell me in the comments what you think. Think it's going to hold up? Think I'm dumb? Don't be afraid. Tell me what you think. So I know that everybody was bored from watching me sit here talking on the last video. That was evident in the YouTube analytics because everybody fast forward past that part to see the work so let's just get to the work we're going to do like a voiceover on this and just show you the steps that I took so I yes started by cutting the roof this isn't something that I recommend you do but this was in the very corner and I couldn't get it the flap up without either cutting it or taking it back on the other side and so I was taking a chance and cutting it and uh, I don't think it's anything that a turn bond can't handle. Once we have that out of the way, we can roll that flap up and look at all this delamination that happened to this plywood. It just peels off. I did take a scraper and get some of it, but most of it just peeled off by hand because it was so soft. Then there was some flashing that overlaps the plywood, so I had to cut it with the reciprocating saw and bend that up so I could... Um, clean that up and get the new piece in there okay then after that I just used the scraper to clean up some of this wood you know there were some rusty screws and stuff in there nails it was hard to get out but all of this wood doesn't come up because some of it is still glued to this styrofoam really well and so I thought I would just epoxy the new board down to that and I think it'll actually help it in the long run before we went any further, I wanted to try to clean up as much of these little debris as I could, so I used the cordless shot back up there. Did a pretty good job. Then we climbed up, did some measurements, um, got the dimensions for that area of square that I thought I could fit in that hole, and then went down with a skill saw and cut out a piece of quarter inch Luan plywood, which I think is what was there originally, to try to put down in that same spot. Then I ended up just getting some general epoxy and mixing up and then rolling it on where the board's going to rest on there. I wish I would have got some Weathers epoxy, uh, Weathers Marine epoxy. That's what a lot of people recommend. This is just a general grade epoxy that I've got on Amazon. Um, not quite sure how it's going to do for me though. I would recommend the Weathers. That's what a lot of people use. So then we do a quick test fit of the wood to make sure it's going to fit in the area that I wanted it to. Um, once we get the fit just right, then we're going to take it back off because I want to roll epoxy on the bottom of this piece of wood. Because number one, I think it'll help give it a protectant. Number two, hopefully it'll help glue it down to that styrofoam. Uh, my hopes probably higher than what's going to happen in actuality though. After we got that, fit in good then we're going to take that flashing on the edge and we're just going to put new screws in it the framing in this is aluminum um, for some reason most screws I think they just went back in the same holes for most of them but I did actually even on the side put a couple of drywall screws in that actually went through the aluminum without even hitting anything now those drywall screws were just temporary let me add that Here's where we're probably going to get into some difference of opinion on this. Um, I decided to use some zinc plated steel. I know it's not 100% weatherproof. Hopefully no water's ever going to touch it. But I wanted there to be some kind of overlapping support between these pieces of wood. And 
because I never found any support under there. All that you can see is the styrofoam. Nothing, no support actually touches the wood in this like two and a half foot area, three foot area. And this probably ain't going to help that much, but then I took the epoxy and I put it over top of the braces. I even tried to pour it down in that crack to try to fill it up as much as I can just to get all the holding power that I can. Granted, in actuality, it probably just thinned out and ran somewhere else. And then before I put the rubber roof back down, I wanted to put some epoxy on that side of it and then on the top part of the plywood that I put down in hopes that it would glue it down. But in actuality, it didn't didn't do anything to it. I went out there the next day and it just lifted right up. After trying to go to a local camping place here in town that's never been able to help me out with anything and they were actually closed on Saturday, I drove down to Camping World, just gritted my teeth, went down there in Chattanooga and they said they didn't have anything that would glue TPO down. Um, but they gave me a guy's name and number and Fort Oglethorpe said to give him a call. So I called him. He told me to just go to Home Depot or Lowe's get a can of this Super 90 contact cement and it should do the job. So after finally getting all that fixed, then we're ready to fix the cut that I made in the rubber of the roof. And for that, we're gonna use our dear friend to turn a bond tape. That's like the Frank's Red Hot Sauce. You put that on everything, on a roof anyway. So, you know, it comes, they make a special primer and a cleaner. So I happen to have some, so I use it. A lot of people don't, but the main thing is get it as clean as you can and apply a lot of pressure when you put it down. Um, you can just use your hand, but it's better if you use some type of roller to apply pressure. I went ahead and overlapped another strip of a turn bond on there too, because I was afraid just one wasn't going to be sufficient with the opening that I had there. So I wanted to keep as much water as I could away from that area. And the turn bond you know, it gives it a watertight seal the whole width of that tape. When I went out to the camper the next day, most of that rubber membrane was glued down but the very corner wasn't which is going to be held down in the front and on the side anyway but I decided to add some more contact cement to try to go ahead and help that a little bit. Now we're finally able to get back to work putting the rain gutter back on so I just put new screws in that area. The rubber membrane that goes across it for the trim I just left off because I always use a turn -a bond over the gutters anyway um, but when you do that, you got to be very careful not to get the turn bond over the whole gutter. You just put it on the side of the gutter where you leave the bottom lip open and that's where the rainwater comes out. Then with that, we're ready to put the awning pole back on. With this, I didn't use any dicor or anything right now. It does have a turn bond behind it because I went through the whole gutter before I put it back on, which is an improvement from the way that it was before. And I am going to go back and put some Eternabond around the top of the awning pole, but first I am going to put some Dicor in there, put some Dicor in the screw holes, but I didn't want to open a can up today just for this one area, so I'm going to handle that whenever I put the front on next week. Hey guys, thanks for following along with our video. If you're still here, congratulations. I know it's almost torture watching me do this stuff, but I'm trying. If you got any tips on things that might help me, put them in the comments down below. Um, if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to push that subscribe button or that like button. Can't get enough of that.